Hello everybody, Ian Robson here for another edition of Iron Horse. Alright, we got a couple things going on today. If you recall from the last episode, uh, we made a little bit of silage. We wrapped these bales out in the field here. And they're just chilling out here for the time being. Uh, we got our Mercedes Benz up here. And we're going to go ahead and cut a little bit more hay today. Uh, this hay is going to be slightly different in the sense that I'm going to have to dry it first to make a few dry hay bales as opposed to wet wrapping them like we did last time. So that's why we are over here. I'm gonna go ahead and use this field right here, which is a bit uh, fairly large actually. All right, let's get this set up here. I'm gonna try to use course play again. Uh, this won't work because there's no, it's all grass, but this will work. So this is, this is what the new points look like in course play. It's crazy. It makes a lot more sense because they are way more visible, uh, which is nice. So if we're doing stuff like this right now, I can see exactly where all the points are, which is really one of the cooler features they added uh, just recently. So I really think it's a nice little feature. Instead of using the eggs and having the two egg rule, I guess we'll have the two square rule. I don't know. I This is pause course. That's set waiting point, crossing point. I'm not sure what these ones are yet, though. Uh, I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually. I haven't looked uh, that much. Uh, where is this one located? Uh, north. So this would be, let's say, north paddock. I don't know. don't know why that word name even comes from. I think it's a, an English word. I wouldn't, well, English in the sense like from England. Anyhow. Uh, so let's go ahead and set this guy up. So at 2.5, starting corner doesn't make a difference. Uh, heading north. Actually, this one will be nice and good for it. Uh, so I want to set it to six headlands. Uh, so basically just it'll keep it away from the outsides. And uh, that should be it. So let's generate the course. And then we'll save this as, I don't know, N paddock. N stands for north paddock, by the way. And mo. I'll just put it. What if I can use it? Oh, they changed that. You can yeah, now use the numpad. That is awesome. You have no idea how many times I have used the numpad and not the numbers haven't gone in because of it. All right, so let's see how this works. Should should work perfectly fine. I don't know why it wouldn't, but I just like watching course play work, I guess. All right, so he's dropped it down. How fast is he going? 20 clicks is probably a bit fast. Also, they added the scroll feature in here like I just did there, which is pretty darn awesome. And uh, they added support for what I just did right there and automatically unfolds and everything, which is really nice. So. Sweet. That is pretty cool. I do like the fact they added support for this. They specifically added support to these mowers, actually, which I really think is cool, so. Anyhow, let's let that guy do his thing. Um, we are going to need this, uh, but not over here. So let's go ahead and move it out of the way. Or move it closer to it. It's funny, the uh, Farming Simulator DLCs came on sale today. It was like a flash sale. Eight hours, and I was like, uh, should I buy them? Because I know it has the Ursus pack in it. And uh, in the end, I didn't. I think I was just trying to save money. I was like, I'll save it. And Spend that on something else, I guess. That's usually what goes through my mind. I'm usually pretty conscious of that type of stuff. Just one of those things, I suppose. But I've always been like that. Alright, and apparently they added uh, support for, I think, that. Uh, not that one specifically, I don't think. But they added support to the H&S uh, manure spreader. Uh, which I believe that's based on, anyway, so... Which is the reason why I think it's the same thing. Uh, we're just going to leave the bales in the field for the time being. And we're going to go ahead and grab the tether here. Uh, because like I said last time, we're going to make a little bit of dry hay. Uh, this is the Pottinger. Um, hit 81N. I don't know if this is actually a real one or not. I, mean, I guess it is, but... You can never be too sure about these things. See, look at that. That's the one thing I really like, like having that many headlands around. So he's done two, but he's just going to do six all together. And that'll create a nice buffer so he doesn't run into anything. Which is one of the cool features I really enjoy. So, well, I enjoy so far at least. 
I also installed the new placeable heaps mod. Where is it here? Uh, so because of that, I don't have any manure here anymore, which is a bit unfortunate, but it is the way it is. Uh, one of the cool things I noticed that they support now, uh, I don't have any other tractors around this area. Uh, it does support apparently mix or forge now, so I could dump the forge that's in there, so which is a nice little feature. Let's go ahead and just uh, that guy can chill out there. Uh, let's take this guy up and go fill up some water for our cows, which are north of here. I don't know what these things are supposed to be. It looks like there should be like stuff hanging from those or something. I don't know. Also, I could use the liquid manure that's in there now, or the slurry. That's not a possibility. So I forget who asked me to get dairy cows because they wanted to see the area, but we are heading there now, so you'll be able to see it momentarily. Uh, it's kind of far away, unfortunately. Uh, so I may have to do... I'm sure there's going to be a, an area up there where I can... Uh, an area up there where I can cut some grass as well, or cut some hay as well, for the cows. Uh, is this the right way? Yes. That's probably a roundabout way of doing it, but we're going to head this way anyways. Yeah, uh, some people wanted to see the dairy area, so we're going to take this over there. Uh, we need to get some water anyways, so I need to keep an eye out for where the water is. What's that? Uh, we're heading to a field. I don't want to head to the field. Every time I play on this map, I always get lost somehow. Ugh. One of these days I'll get used to it. I don't know what episode this is now. We're pretty high up on the... Uh... Well, I guess we can just drive through here. Sure, why not? Well, this is the shop. That's where we are. I'm not sure what episode this is. Yeah, I think this is episode 23, I think. Somewhere in that area. So as I mentioned a while ago, I was considering ending the series kind of short and doing a little bit on uh, Spring Hill Valley. But ever since Spring Hill Valley has come out, I've noticed there have been a, a large number of people all doing something on Spring Hill Valley. So I'm slightly reluctant to. This is the same thing that's happened with uh, Spring Hill Farm, I suppose, uh, because a lot of people really wanted to play on that map too, so you, I'm seeing lots of Let's Plays. So one of the things I'm considering doing is just doing like a a little mini series on it, like I don't know, like a five or a ten episode series, just to showcase the map to a certain extent. So, uh, ooh, that might be a good area to pick up some water. Let's just back this up in here. Nice little uh, boat launch area, almost. No, we'll ever know we're here, minus the little spot where we drove over the grass and it's gone away, but. It's nice and shallow. It looks, well, initially, looks, well, maybe it's not shallow. The first little bit shallow, at least. We're gonna see how shallow the rest of it is. Uh, I forget which side it is. That's something I really don't like about this truck. Where the actual refill point is. It's like way, I don't know if it's, not, I think it's this right here. It would be cool if you could actually get out. I don't think I can do anything out here. But it'd be cool if you could actually take that out and uh, put the hose in the water. That would that'd be a nice little feature, but somehow I don't think they're going to add that anytime soon, but it'd be a nice thing to add. Alright. One of the other things I realized that they added was the feature of uh, you can have two combines or two to the same vehicle working on the same field now. Uh, with, a no, with a developer version of course play, which I thought was really cool. So if you want to have two combines do run in the same course, you can have that. If you want to have two of anything, basically, you can have them run the same course. All right, there's one clamp you can call it or bunker. Liquid manure from the cows. This is the cow area. Is that the water? Doesn't appear to be. Oop. Where is the water then? 
must be in here somewhere. Uh, probably not there. Where the heck is it? Do you have to, maybe you have to drive into the, uh, into the area? Hmm. This is obviously for milk. Do you have to manually sell milk here? I don't know. You probably can sell it manually, but you don't have to sell it. Oh, there it is. It's one of these ones. You have to drive into the field, which for this truck is not a good idea, but I believe this is where you give them water. I think. Oh, it's one of these situations again. I... Th I forget which farm it is. Lomerheim, I think. Uh, this thing, I believe, is where the water is supposed to go on this map. Um, but what you run into is a situation like I just did there. Like, this truck is obviously close enough to drop the water off. Uh, especially when you back right into the truck, into the area. It's definitely close enough to uh, fill up with water, but it does not work well. That's unfortunate. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I'm just going to take a little look around here. Maybe it, maybe it's somewhere else. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it is right there. Little cow there eating some some food. This is good. Yeah, that must be it. Oh, that's annoying. We'll give it one more go. Pretty sure that is the area where you're supposed to give your uh, your wa cow's water. I was reading an interesting article today. There's a new barn in Ontario. It's like one of three barns that has a robotic a, a robotic milker. Uh, but what uh, the way these things tend to work, uh, these things right here, which go on the cows, um, they tend to use lasers. Uh, but there's a new one that came to Ontario, which uses 3D infrared technology uh, in order to determine where the location of the cows. Um, teats are basically so I thought that was kind of interesting that they actually had that uh, capability to have 3d infrared technology uh, to use that nope this definitely looks like it would be close enough let's try this again nope Zero for information. Mm -hmm. Left door, right door. I don't know what number five is supposed to be. Oh, it's the mirrors. Okay, well, that's good to know. Just in case I ever need to use the mirrors or turn the mirrors off, I guess. Yeah, they do not want to do that. What's two? Indicators. Yeah, they don't want to get uh, water from this, apparently, so. Okie doke. I guess I'll just drive away. What's this area over here? Yeah, but it was it was it's, it's kind of cool because it was one of like only three barns in Ontario that actually have this new technology in it. So I thought it was kind of uh, kind of cool. This must be the I don't know what this would be, but that looks pretty cool though. Uh, it would be. Old dock, maybe? That's the only thing I can think of. Doesn't look old, but it's a pretty big boat for a small dock, though. I have to admit that. Alright, I'm just gonna leave this truck up here because I don't know what to do with it now. Uh, he is almost done, so he's doing the last little bits here. It looks like he's butchered quite a The middle part he's butchered a little bit, but the outside has done a pretty good job, so. Anyways, we can go ahead and get this guy started up, and uh, we can start tedding. It's funny, I've never used one of these types of tedders before, um, but it, it does seem, I don't know, seems interesting, I suppose. The one I've used is, um, let me just pop out here. The one I've used is basically the same idea, except it'd be just these two in the middle and not the ones on the other sides, and just drive over the row, so it's like a single row tether, I guess you would call it, if you were to call it something. I'm just gonna go at level one, just so I don't hit that other guy there. It's probably fast enough anyways, so. <laughs> He's going around in circles. I'm just gonna stop him. 
And I'm, get, I'm actually going to get this little bit right here that he kind of missed here. As much as I like course play, you know, there are times when it's not the best thing in the world. Like that scenario right there where he missed a huge chunk. I don't know why. I think it's just because of the... Uh, it's not a square field and that probably is part of the reason why. It's interesting. I've been looking at something called Patreon. Uh, I've seen a lot. I follow quite a few people in relation to Minecraft uh, on Twitter, and a lot of them have been using Patreon, which is kind of interesting. I think it's pretty cool, actually. It's like a way of supporting artists uh, or creators, they call them, instead of artists, uh, in various ways. And one of the, oh, well, this particular way is like a financially give them a, a bit of money every month, which is kind of cool. Uh, so, like, they have there's some interesting things, like they have. Anywhere from like one dollar up to like ten or twenty-five dollars, and then you'll get certain things based on that. So, for example, um, one of the ones I looked at was Covert Jaguar, uh, which is the guy who does. Let's go in here, uh, which is the guy who does Railcraft for Minecraft. And the way he has it set up is, if you support one dollar, he's like he's thankful. If you support like $25, it's, it's uh, not just like a one-time thing, it's like a, a monthly thing. So if you, if you give them like $25 a month or $10 a month, there's different, um, I don't know what you call it, different rewards, I guess, kind of. So one of, the, one of the cool things with him was if you supported him with like $1, he would uh, say thank you, basically, and that would be it. Uh, if you gave him like $25, he would... Uh, give you uh, beta access to some of the stuff he's working on, uh, which I'm kind of interested in actually because one of the things he's working on is electric trains, which I think is super cool for Railcraft. Pretty excited about that. He said he's been trying to work on it for a while, but just hasn't got around to it. And uh, Patreon has given him the kind of nudge to do it. So let's just turn this off here. Move this guy out of the way. And we'll put them just over here, I guess. Right beside the Bally Robin, whatever they call this thing. There we go, perfect. Excellent. It's funny, I really like the Massey Ferguson's I picked up, but the problem I've run into is that they're articulated. Nah, well, not a problem, but they're articulated, so for stuff like this, I'd seem seems a bit odd to use them for. Maybe it's just me, but it just seems a bit strange to use them for that kind of stuff. So, Anyways, getting back to Covert Jaguar. So yeah, that was one of the interesting things I discovered. Uh, if you wanted to support him, you could do, th do so through Patreon. Like, you know, there's anywhere from a dollar up to, I think it's $25. Or there's some, like, depends on who you want to support too. So basically, it's a way of supporting people who make Minecraft mods. Uh, one way of supporting them, I suppose. Which I thought was really cool because it gives you the gives you access to not access is the wrong word. It allows you to directly support people who make things you like, essentially. So if you like artists, there's a certain there's a few artists out there you may like, and uh, by supporting them through Patreon, it gives them a, a way to do it for a living to a certain extent at least. It's not a hundred percent, but uh, it does give them a certain a little bit of leeway, which is really cool. So. I don't know. I think it's a really pretty cool little system they got going on there. And they recently got a. Um, there was recently a. I don't know you call it, not a blog, but I guess it was a post on TechCrunch about how they raised. Uh, the guys at Patreon raised $15 million um, to, I guess, update their system. Or I didn't read it. I read part of it, but not all of the post. It didn't, uh, didn't intrigue me that much because it was just about money, I guess. But. But I thought it was pretty cool how how they're trying to help artists and creators, I guess I should say, sorry. So maybe, am I not going fast enough? Is that why this thing's not tedding properly? Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, but uh, so there's like, Covert Jaguar has one. Pahimar, who does uh, Let's Play with uh, Direwolf. Uh, he also had a, uh, he also has a Patreon and he has, he actually had to shut part of his down because he just didn't have the time to do one of his patron um, duties, I guess it would be. 
Uh, basically, if you pledge a certain amount of money to him per month, he would kind of sit down with you and have a little chat with you via Google Hangout and whatnot. And uh, you get a chance to like pick his brain to a certain extent. So really cool. But he just you know he has a new he just had an, a recent child, so he kind of has a bit uh, less time than he would like to do that type of thing. But I'm sure he uh, is enjoying spending time with his child, right? So yeah, that's what uh, that's what he does. Uh, one of the cool things I thought with. Um, One of the cool things that Cobra Jaguar does is if you give him like $25 a month, I think he'll make a a specific decal for train or trains that you can a specific decal for trains, which I thought was really neat. So let's just uh, lower that. There we go. Let's do a little bit of a dance there. Um, I did pick up a new mod. Where is it here? That's still the forestry mod. There's enough trees on this map that I can run into. I don't want to put any more down. They're all collidable, which is funny. Uh, this one right here. This is one I recently added. Second generation was built. I thought it was kind of a cool looking one. I haven't tested it out yet, so I really don't know how it looks or anything, but I have it, so. And was there anything else? Uh, no, that's it for now. Anyhow, let's grab these the crone rake here. I don't know, I really like this rake. I, I bet you this thing is, I sh should have checked. Uh, but I was on the Course Play uh, GitHub page, which is where you can download the developer version of Course Play. And I didn't see if they have the Squadro in there, but I'm guessing it was supported specifically. Basically, anything that NA Modding has created... Anything that NA Modding has created is probably is now supported, it seemed like. Based on what I saw, at least. Like, maybe it's not the case, but... Just seemed to be. This is easier doing it out of the cab. One of the many things that's easier doing out of the cab, especially with this type of stuff. I guess if I had GPS on, it would be easy, but... Eh, I don't think GPS would work in this scenario. Well, maybe it would. I'd have to set it up properly, but the field's really not that big for me to worry about it. Yeah, so that's what I was looking at today, and I thought it was kind of interesting, the whole uh, patron thing. Patreon, I should say, sorry. Uh, I don't know, I think it's a really great way of supporting people that you uh, do things that you like. Uh, uh, no, it doesn't want to do it... Uh, it's not too bad, I guess. We'll give it a go. We will see how this works out. Yeah. I had a feeling I was going to miss that. Oh well. Yeah, and that's what I was looking at today. I thought it was pretty cool how they... Uh, how they set that up. It's a... Uh, basically, what it, what it is, is, is a, uh, a monthly donation essentially and there's donations anywhere from a dollar up to twenty five dollars anyways I'll get off that I just uh, it really intrigued me I was like well that's kinda cool anyhow we should probably get these cows up to productivity so far they're at seventy percent productivity and we haven't done anything to help them yet uh, which is nice I suppose because they're at such a high productivity but they only have silage and they don't have TMR yet but if we give them TMR uh, they should jump up in productivity to 100%. Apparently all they need is a little bit of silage and they'll jump in productivity, which is kind of ex <laughs> kind of funny when you think about it. You'd think they would need more than just silage, but nope, that's all they need. They are good to go. Yeah, that barn I was talking about that had the uh, that special system for milking cows... Uh, they actually recently had an open house that I could have gone to, but I just didn't get a chance to because it was uh, I was doing other things. But I really have to try to get to some of the uh, open houses they have in Ontario here for uh, high-end dairy farms like that. There we go. Uh, let's raise.
raise those up, put it in a transport. There we go. Yeah, I really gotta try and get out and ch check out some of these barns because they are pretty amazing. Uh, some of the ones they have these days are just fantastic. Uh, that barn actually that I was talking about has a special system for uh, creating bedding for their dairy cows. So what it was, it was had a system of drying down the manure, it seemed like. And let's raise this. Drying down the manure and using that as bedding. And apparently it was really light and fluffy, according to what they were saying. And it seemed a bit strange when I was reading it. And there was actually a picture of a guy holding it. So I was like, well, what is he actually holding? But it's just, it looked like it's compost is what they referred to it as. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So yeah, it was like a, a dry down compost that you could use to uh, use as bedding for your cow, so. Because cows like to be pampered in that scenario. They say, uh, comfortable, cow comfortable cows are productive cows. So. Can I make this bigger? Yes, I can. I thought so. Like that seemed a little small. Oh, you don't want to. Okay, well, we'll do it this way then. I already wrapped the bale, that's the reason why. I was gonna say, I'm like, why aren't you working properly? But it's because I already wrapped the bale. Anyhow. Yeah, so that's what they used. It was like a, had a really strange system, and apparently it took like 36 hours for it to dry down and be, to be able to use as uh, bedding for the cows. So, pretty interesting stuff. It's crazy how farm, how technological farms are getting. It used to be just a simple, you know, you go into the milking parlor, you milk your cow, and that's it basically. But now it's you have to become, <laughs> you almost have to become a software engineer. It seems like in order to get things to work properly. Or have things run consistently without any uh, hiccups, I guess. I don't know, but that does open the does open the door for people like me who are kind of like te technological and interested in agriculture at the same time. So, so I thought was, I think it's kind of an interesting little avenue. I'm sure there's lots of guys out there like me who are uh, into farming to a certain extent and into technology and. Uh, Probably they want to cross the two a little bit. And definitely dairy dairy farming is one of the ways you can do that these days because there's a crazy amount of technology in dairy farming, specifically dairy barns, but there's also a lot of technology in relation to um, uh, precision agriculture as well, which is another interesting field. For those people looking to get into agriculture but don't want to do the whole 100% farm thing, that's one of the ways you can do it. Or I guess agronomy would might be another way. Ooh, that's a big bump there. Uh, let's get this little spot right here, which we missed. There we go, perfect. Alright, nice. I thought we would get more bales of this. So far, we've only gotten, what, two? It's a bit lame, <laughs> if you think about it. I guess this is a small field, right? That's why I have to keep in mind. It's just a small field, and that's why we only got two bales, but I would have liked to have seen three, maybe. Maybe it was because I used coarse play, and that's the reason why uh, we didn't get as many bales, because maybe what happens, I don't know if it still works this way, but I know when, uh, in the past, if you use the uh, tear more and you go over the same thing more than one time, what could happen is you would actually lose some of the material, and I think that's the same thing that's happening now. Just a guess, though. I am not an expert by a long shot. Alright, there we go. Let's get this last little bit over here, and we're going to have a little tiny little bale, I guess. Oh, well, maybe not. Yeah. That's annoying. Now the question is, do you get this last little strip? Or not? Uh, I guess so, whatever. 
It'll be as time. I don't think I mean, we, we may not even be able to do anything with this bale. Let's see if we can't get some of the stuff around the edge here. A 200 liter bale. Jeez. Oh well, that's the one thing nice that's nice about this particular baler is the fact that you can, you know, use it to bale small amounts if you have what I have a situation like here. That's the one thing I don't like about this thing. Alright. Little tinsy wincy bale there. Jeez, look at that thing. That's funny. I'm just gonna pick that up with my forks, because that's gonna be a pain if I just leave it there. Because I don't think anything I have. Well, that's not true, actually. Uh, let's change it to this. There we go. Perfect. Let's just take this back to our storage area. So now we have a little bit more hay. So we got three, <laughs> three hay bales. And we got four silage bales now. So that's good. Alright. Let's go take this back to the farm. And I'll do that off camera. So that's it for today, folks. A little talk about dairy farms and dairy barns and whatnot. Uh, that's it for today. Said that already, Ian. You can move on now. <laughs> Jeez. My name is Ian Ross. This has been Farming Simulator 2013 coming at you from Iron Horse. Catch you guys later.